AutoScript is the industry's premier ASR solution designed exclusively for the legal industry. Developed by VoiceScript, a legal technology company, AutoScript delivers unsurpassed text output from audio recordings of legal proceedings. AutoScript Desktop is a transcript production ASR editing tool that is also purpose-built for the legal transcription industry to streamline the process of turning ASR output into a delivery-ready transcript, reducing transcription time by up to 75% in some cases. Okay, let's transcribe our first audio file. The first thing we need to do is sign into AutoScript. And we're going to create a new job. Let's start by giving the job a name and uploading the audio files. You can click here and browse your file directory on your computer, or you can simply click and drag and drop the audio file here. We can improve the ASR output quality by adding specific names, maybe of the participants, cities, towns, businesses, acronyms, anything pertinent to this file. Alternately, you can create a CSV file that contains your spellings you want to include and just upload them here. Next, we're going to give the job type. This was a deposition and the recording type, it was remote. And we're gonna add the location, state, this one was in Florida, and the city. This helps with dialects and accents. Once the file has uploaded, the Calculate Price button turns blue and we can click on it. This file was 22 minutes long at a rate of $15 per audio hour, the cost of this file is $5.75. To continue, we click on the Transcribe button or Cancel to back out of the job. When the job is finished transcribing, it shows as complete in our dashboard, and we have several options to download the ASR output. We can click here to download a DOCX file, an RTF file, or a TXT file. We can click here and share a link with another user who can open the package in their AutoScript desktop for editing. Or we can click on the Download Package button here and open it in our own version of AutoScript Desktop. Once AutoScript Desktop opens, it'll ask us to give the job a name, this could be the same name we used for the transcription. Now it's going to download the audio files and the ASR text output. Once downloaded, it's going to ask us if we would like to use our own document template or if we want to edit just the raw ASR. For this one, we're going to use our own template. We are going to select the template we want to use and AutoScript Desktop will load it. Now it's asking us where do we want to insert the ASR text. So we'll need to position our cursor where we want the text to go into our, our document. And click the Insert ASR Text button. And the text is loaded at our point of insertion in the document. So let's take a tour of AutoScript Desktop. How about starting with the player? You have your standard controls, play, pause, reverse, and advance. And of course, these are controllable with an integrated USB foot pedal. Here we have our speed control, this will show our current play time and the overall time of the audio. I have the ability to mute the audio if I want. This is a volume control, and of course you can still use your volume control in your system tray. And this is where we're gonna set our skip amount for the audio. 
This is how many seconds it will advance or how many seconds it will go in reverse. So let's take a look at the top and we have our ribbon. The first ribbon is the file menu. And these are gonna be all of the tools for your quick edits. Your home tab ribbon is gonna look very similar to your word pro processing program. And it's gonna have your basic settings for paragraph styles, setting your font, um, find and replace, and of course your styles. The view tab ribbon, we could add the rulers if we wanted to see those, zoom in and out, very basic uh, controls that we can do from there. And then of course we have the page layout. Um, again, very similar to your word processing program. It's gonna tell you what your margins are. Um, you could change the orientation of it. But most of everything you do is gonna be out of the file menu because these are where we find all of our editing tools. Now, each of these will go into detail a little bit more on some upcoming chapters. So let's talk about follow play and playback features. So follow play simply is a visual indicator that moves along with the text in your transcript synced to the audio. I pause the audio, it pauses the follow play on the word that I was at. I restart the play and it's gonna continue the follow play. Now there are many options for follow play. You can even turn it off if you choose to. The options are made uh, in such a way that you can customize this to be personal to you. So the first option is synchronize audio with cursor position when the audio is not playing. Simply this means if you edit and restart the audio, the audio will begin playing at the beginning of the line you edited. Pause audio on text change. Uh, there are a lot of users that don't wanna continue playing the audio if they're making an edit. They may not be using a USB foot pedal, but are using keyboard shortcuts. So this feature is especially useful for them so that if they start making an edit in the transcript, it will automatically pause the audio and then start playing it again from that point. Um, the third option, on pause, move the cursor to the audio position. Um, that's one of my favorites. Typically, I'm gonna wanna make an edit right around uh, the word or the words that I'm currently listening to in the audio. So I like my cursor to pause right where I stop the playback so I can easily move it around and make my edits and continue playing. And then of course the last option is enable follow play. And if we uncheck it, uh, it simply disables the feature so you don't have to deal with it at all. So let's talk about hotkeys or keyboard shortcuts. No transcriber can do their job without them. So here on the file ribbon, if we go to hotkeys and click it, this opens up our hotkey window. I'm gonna expand this a little bit so we can see it. So we have hotkeys for the player controls, the editing controls, we even give you a complete list of all of the system hotkeys. But let's focus on the AutoScript hotkeys right now. And I'm gonna show you how each and every one of these are completely customizable to your needs. So I'm gonna go down here and we have insert a question symbol and insert an answer symbol. So I'm gonna assign a hotkey to each of these. So I'm gonna double click on the one I wanna work with. It's gonna open up an edit window I'm gonna use the down arrow for the first control and select what I want, and I'm happy with the control key. And then on the second part of the keyboard combination, I'm gonna click the down arrow again. And for my question symbol, I think I wanna use the Q. So it'll be control Q, and it will insert the question symbol for me. 
I click the X, it submits it to the table, and now I'm going to do the same thing for inserting an answer. So double click on answer. I'm got I'm happy with the control as the first part of my keyboard combination and I'm going to select the A. Now I know that control A is a select all, but for me personally, that is not something that I'm going to use within editing this document. So for me, it's more useful to use control A as inserting my answer symbol. Um, and this will override what any control A was configured to do previously. Again, I click the X, it commits it, and let's take a look at what that keyboard shortcut looks like. If I need to insert a question here because um, the ASR didn't pick it up or there was an interruption, I'm going to hit Control Q and it has now insert the question symbol with the appropriate spacing uh, that I had already predefined in my layouts. And we'll talk more about layouts a little later. Opening and closing files. There are many options on the file tab for opening and closing files. And I'm gonna take you through each one of them and explain what the options mean. Uh, let's start with new job. So if I click on new job, it simply opens up a window, gives me a link to the Autoscript website where I can run a transcription job by uploading my audio. And we'll close out of that. Open job allows me to open any job that I have previously worked on. It could be a job that is completed or a job that I'm in the middle of working on. I simply select the name of the job from the list, click the OK button, and it will open in Autoscript Desktop. Import and export job. Um, let's talk about that for a minute. So that's a little different than just saving a job. Um, I may want to export a job that I want to send to a proofreader. And if I export rather than just save as, it's going to create a nice Autoscript desktop package that has the transcript in it along with the synced audio. So when the proofreader imports the job, it's going to import exactly how you see it on my screen now with the transcript and the synced audio. And then they have the advantage of using the integrated player to do their proofing. So to export a job, I simply click on export. I give it a name, uh, job uh, number one, and I click on open, and it's going to create a package, uh, and it's going to create that package in a zip file, and I send that to the proofreader as my example, and the proofreader will import the job by clicking on import, and selecting the zip file. Um, Autoscript Desktop will automatically unpackage the zip file, load the transcript, load the synced audio, and uh, they're ready to work. Uh, open a file is simply that. You can open any uh, Word document, text file, RTF file. There are many file types that are supported that you could open right in. Autoscript Desktop. Save. Um, you can click on this, obviously, to save your file at any time. This really doesn't have anything to do with opening and closing files, but it's worth a mention right here that the minute you create a job in Autoscript Desktop, it does an autosave and will continue to autosave every minute while you're working on the job. So if you were to accidentally close the program without saving, the worst it loss you would experience is a minute's worth of work. Save As allows us to save the document in many different file formats. It's not going to package up the audio. It's just going to save it out as a file, a doc, docx, txt, rtf, 
even PDF if you need it. And that covers opening and closing files. What are layouts? Layouts contain editing format settings that match the requirements for the transcript recipient. You can create as many different layout templates as you need. Let's explore layouts. We're going to go to the File tab and on the ribbon we're going to click the Layouts button and this will open the Layouts window. Let's take a tour of what we see. Duplicate allows you to take any existing template that you already have, uh, even the default, and create a copy of it. This allows us to have a starting point for creating new format layouts. The Edit button allows us to go into any of our saved layouts and edit the format settings. The Remove button allows us to remove any layout that we have in our list. Uh, note, you are not allowed to remove the default layout. Set Active allows us to take the highlighted layout from our list and set that as the active layout for the transcript we're working on. So let's explore the format settings in Layouts. I prefer to start with the default layout and set it up as my baseline for all other layouts so that I can simply click the duplicate button on default and I have a starting point for creating my other layouts for my custom settings. So we go into the formats by clicking edit and I think we should just take these one by one. So the tabs option here just shows you what your tab count is set for your point of insertion for each of the elements. Starting with Colloquy. If my template already came with predefined style guides for Colloquy, Q&A, uh, any other custom settings that I have, I can use those, so I could use ES Colloquy from this template, or you can simply use the styles that are provided by Autoscript. All of them start with an AS for Autoscript, and I'm going to select Autoscript Colloquy. I'm just going to use those for this training. I want my tab count to be set at two, so I want my colloquy to start at two tabs in, and I click OK. Next is the byline. Now I want to start my byline with the word by and a space, and I want it to be in capital letters, so it will automatically insert this and then the speaker name I select behind it. I've already selected my style as byline, and my tab count is zero because I want it at the flush at the left margin. My Q&A settings. I first want to define the style that I want for it. And again, for this demonstration, I'm using the Autoscript styles, so ASQA. And I want it to be one tab in from the left margin. And I'm going to go in to each one and define how I want it to look in this document. Do I want a period? Do I not want a period? And how many spaces behind the queue, which is typically five. I'm going to click OK. I've already got both of those set. And I'll click OK again. Quick headings are our section headers, direct examination, cross-examination, uh, redirect, recross, and so on. So I need to go into each one. And this is the title, direct. I need to type it exactly how I want it to look in the document when I insert it. And then I select the style that I want. Typically, section headers are centered, so we've given you several options if you are using the Autoscript styles. 
where you could underline it. It could be in italics, bold, or just plain centered. Um, I think this one I selected as centered bold. I click OK, and I would do that for each one of these. And again, by doing this in your default layout, you have a baseline for all future layouts that you're going to build. And I click OK. Quick parentheticals. Um, we've given you a few as examples to start with. If you wanted your own parenthetical, uh, I'm going to add one, click the Add button, and this is going to be, um, how about, on the record. There, I've typed it. I want this one to be in all caps on the rack record at, and I've left space so that I, I it reminds me to put the time in there. And I'll select the style that I want. Um, and the style is based on where the insertion point is. And I want this one to be in alignment with Q&A, which is one tab in. And I click OK. And there's my new quick parenthetical and I have I have other ones if I do not want one that's in here maybe uh, recess taken is one I would never use I can simply delete it and click OK quick text is reserved for those blurbs that get put in for example when a witness is sworn and we'll edit this one uh, Every client that you are producing a transcript for uh, may want it a little different. We've put some starter samples in here. You can customize them to what you want or you can remove them. Uh, the witness was called to testify, duly sworn, and provided the following testimony. And my quick text I want to put in as centered. Again, customize these, add, edit, and delete them as you need to get your starter, your base set up for your future layouts. The speakers list. We have provided some stock speakers to the list, reporter, the notary, witness in the court. Delete any of these that you don't want in here. But at the beginning of each job that you will be transcribing, you will add the speakers for that job. So the attorney name, attorney's names. And when we get into uh, editing this job, you will see me do this in a future section. And that's everything you should need to know about formats. I have now got my default format set and I'm going to create a duplicate format from my baseline. I can open this now and edit it. I can change any of these settings that I need to change and give it a name. And I'm going to call this one Florida Deposition. I click OK. And now I have a layout in here for Florida Depositions with the custom settings for that requirement. So now it's time to edit our first transcript. So I've already uploaded my audio to Autoscript Web and it has transcribed the audio. I'm going to click on this icon here that says Open in Editor App. And I'm going to click on Open Auto Script. And I will wait for it to launch Auto Script. I don't need this window anymore. And of course, it's going to ask me to create a name for the job. 
and I'll call this uh, Perez v. Peninsula and click OK. And it's going to begin downloading the audio files. And now the transcript file. And it's asking me if I would like to use my own template. And of course I would. And I'm going to pick this one. And it's going to load my template. And it's asking me to place the cursor where I would like the point of insertion to be for the ASR text. So I click OK. I scroll down. And this is where I want the text to go, and I click Insert ASR Text. Perfect. Now I'm going to go into Layouts. Choose the layout that I want to assign and set as active for this transcript, and I'm going to use Florida Deposition. And now I'm going to go back into Layouts one more time. And I'm going to Edit. Click on the Speakers list. And I, of course, need to add the speakers for this job. My base speakers are there, Reporter, Notary, Witness, and the Court. But now I'm going to add the attorneys. I know that Janice Spellman is one of the attorneys. And I'll type the name here, how I want it to appear in the transcript for the byline and for colloquy. And click OK. And I'll do this for the other attorney. I click on Add. The other attorney is Haley Goldman. and click OK again. And I'm done with that. There were only the two attorneys and click OK and close this window out. So now I'm ready to start editing and I'm going to play a little bit of the audio for you. Sorry, I'm a little redundant here. I have a lot of recordings to get going. OK, this was the reporter. So I'll put my cursor here, shift home, control four, and it's going to bring up my speaker list and I can either double click reporter, I can hit enter, highlight it and hit enter, or I can hit the number associated uh, with the speaker. So I hit the number one and now every speaker A from this point forward has been changed to the reporter and let's listen on. Sorry, I'm a little redundant here. I have a lot of recordings to get go to get going. I don't like to take a chance. Um, okay. Oh, that okay actually came by the, from the the deponent. So I'm going to hit enter here. I'm going to hit um, control nine and I'm going to insert the witness and it has now inserted the witness he's the one who said okay so let me edit this to a period I'm going to hit enter here again and now we're back to the reporter so it's control 9 for my keyboard shortcut and back to the reporter and let's capitalize that S. So I have a read-on that I have to do on behalf of the agency. So okay. we'll do that. And then, oh, and there was another OK. Those little OKs are hard for the ASR to pick up. So I'm going to hit Enter again, Control-9. I'm going to go down to the witness. And he said OK. Enter again. Enter, not delete, control nine, and now we're back to the reporter again. 
on behalf of the agency. So okay. we'll do that and then get. Oh, and I heard we will do that. I know it's a verbatim transcript. So I think you get the idea here. Um, I want to go down a little further. I think I'll actually go. This was the control B for this was the witness. We'll just change this one real quick. There may be a lot of speaker B's that it has to change. This was a very long deposition. There we go. Um, let's scroll down into this. We don't want to have to listen to all of it. Um, and I can actually put my cursor here. Your firm affiliation and your agreement on the record. Ms. Goldman? And that sounded more like a question to me. Ms. Goldman? Oh, and this was the witness again. He liked to keep interrupting. So control four, witness. And then we went to Haley Goldman. And now I go down to Ms. Goldman. And there'll be several of these that need to be changed. Haley Goldman from Clobber Goldman and and this was actually Clobber. I have it here in the notice of deposition. It was K L A U B E R from Clobber Goldman. Haley Goldman from Clobber Goldman and I agree to the terms. And okay, and this is the Spellman. And my name is Janae. And it's Janae. And it was Spellman, not Stallman. Janae Spellman from Canada, Pennsylvania, on behalf of Hatton. Canada was a K. Canada, Pennsylvania, on behalf All right, so let's scroll down to where we actually get into direct examination. Uh, there was a lot of colloquy that went on here. Um, let me see. I think I went a little too far. Uh, witnesses sworn in. Please proceed, Miss Goldman. And, <clears throat> and this is where I'm going to start my transition into direct examination. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to hit my keyboard shortcut for my quick heading, which is control three. And I want direct examination. So I'll hit the number one. It inserts it. I hit enter again. We're going to go to our keyboard shortcut for our byline, which is control eight. I select who's going to be doing the questioning and it'll be Miss Goldman. So this one, I'm going to just hit enter. And now it says by Miss Goldman. And of course, I have to change Miss Goldman, shift home, and I'm going to change that to Q&A, control five, and enter. So it's going to change all of the Miss Goldmans from this point forward in the transcript to Q without affecting any of the Miss Goldmans above it. So now I'm going to go to the witness, and I'm going to do the same thing, only we're going to change this to the answer. And of course, I highlighted it and selected enter. And now all of the witnesses have been changed to A from this point forward without affecting any of them above. So we've got our heading, our section heading, which is direct examination. We quickly threw in our byline. We switched to Q&A. And then of course, as I listen on to the transcript, through the transcript, then I will switch back to colloquy as needed and then back to Q&A again. And that's how we edit the transcript.